Well, it appears that summer's here, nice weather's here, and I think it's time we finally get this car able to be on the road. So today we have quite a few little tasks. Nothing major, because as you can see, with this glorious cold start for the boys, she's pretty much ready for the road. She's ready for the streets. But we still have some work to do. Alignment, bleed the, uh, bleed the brakes, retorque a bunch of random hardware. What else? There's gonna be other things too that I'm just forgetting. I gotta look at my list. But let's get this car on the lift and start out with getting some brakes. As of right now, we ain't got no brakes and it's a little sketchy to drive. Brakes are all bled out, axle nuts torqued. I was going, axle nut cotter pins installed. I was going to potentially lower the car down a little bit, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. It's at a pretty, pretty freaking good height right now. And I don't wanna mess with it. I don't want tires rubbed on fenders. I don't want it super stiff. If it's lower, I gotta stiffen the coils. So let's just lock them in place how they are. <clears throat> Going through and tidying up a couple little things in the bay. One thing I really didn't like was the MAF to intake air temp sensor adapter. This thing is super freaking long and it needs to be about this long. So I'm ditching the adapter and I'm going to just wire in of course, this car is never going to go back to MAF. MAF is junk. We don't need it. I'm going to wire in a intake air temp sensor directly into the MAF wiring. It's going to be much cleaner, much shorter, and overall just better. One thing I have been needing to do and heavily neglecting, this thing, dare I say, still has water in it. I'm going to let it warm up. Get that thermostat open and then drain all the water out of it. Hopefully the water's not too rusty. Well, thankfully, 
Thankfully it's just water because I'm making a mess. Well, that water drains out. Before I dry this thing, of course, I need a set of taillights. And this is what's nice about having a, another Evo. These aren't my favorite tails in the world. My favorite would be the JDM-8 with the amber, but these are definitely a whole lot better than the OEM-8 tails, that's for sure. I am going to bleed out the cooling system and drive. I am dying to go for a cruise with the sunroof open. I always like to cycle it a bit, get it warm with the heater cranks to get all the coolant going through the heater core and then it'll suck it should suck a bunch of coolant in do that a few times good to go good to freaking go the sunroof and go to the carbon roof this is this is the life Are we good to go or what <sighs> what a glorious note always got to keep my protection on my wheel you know what I'm saying Oh man, what a nice OEM style build. This is insane. It's so nice having this interior, like it's like 99%. There's a couple screws on that door that are missing with the cab yeah. I had to order those in and then the trunk carpet as well I I'm just gonna take it out of the nine for now I'd rather get this car complete know what I need to order for the nine the nine just sits anyway it's kind of a kind of turned into a parts car at this point for this thing there's not much missing as of right now it's the tail lights I think that's about it is it just the tails Brakes work perfect. Sheesh. Wonder what has more hours. This or the Type R? Into the build, I'm saying. I would say it's definitely easier to drive than the Type R. Definitely needs an alignment. The airbag lights on, ABS lights on, check engine lights on. Don't know why, but we'll figure that out one of these days. All simple fixes. I'm sure of it. All right, boys, just got back to the shop. It is bizarre how good this thing drives. All these little kinks slowly but surely getting worked out. When I step back and look at the car, I might change the caliper color. 
I might go to an OEM Brembo, Evo 8 Brembo, red caliper color. I don't know. I really like the gray, but they just, they're just there. They're like, you can't see them at all. They don't stand out at all like a Brembo, in my opinion, should. For example, if you come over here, take a look at this cool car. I'm kidding. You see this? Now they wouldn't be this nice bright lollipop red that's on the Hawkeye, but just a nice OEM, you know? What do you guys think? Leave it subtle to where you can't see them and they kind of just blend in with the car, or do we change it up? But nonetheless, let's get her back in the shop and figure out what we're gonna do next. I should probably focus on the errors that it's given me. ABS, airbag, check engine light. <laughs> Hopefully, by the end of the night, we can have... That might be a bit aggressive. I don't know what's going on with the ABS or the airbag. Check engine light, I'm sure it's going to be an easy sort. But let's scan the system real quick, pull out the hotel, scan the system, and see what it says. Ideally, by the end of the night, it would be nice to have all of those issues resolved. And steal some more parts off the Evo 9 to get this thing done. Okay. This thing is so freaking old. I don't even know if I can use an Autel on it. I swear I use the mini Autel more than I do the big one. The big one, maybe it's just me, but I feel like it was kind of pointless. And it was a two or $2,200 purchase. Pfft. Makes you want to cry. This is four or 500 bucks on Amazon. Issues are as follows. The MFI, which is the engine ECU, has two codes, a P1, P0134, which is, that should be the rear O2 sensor, and then intake air temp sensor high. That was because earlier when I was driving the car, I didn't have the intake air temp sensor plugged in. Now, ABS has a lot. Front right, open short, front left, open short, right, rear, open short, right, rear, left, open short, and four other codes. And then airbag, it just says code number 22, which I'm gonna have to Google what that is. It's a lot of ABS codes and I don't know why. Mm, I bet I know what it is. I bet it's a clock spring. I'm certain of it. So the engine ECU, that's easy to fix. The rear O2 sensor, of course, we're not running in the car, so that just needs to be deleted, which when we go to the Haltech, that'll be all sorted out. Clock spring most likely does need to be replaced and then I need to get this car up on the lift spin all the wheels, see if we are getting actual readings from the ABS sensors. I'm gonna deal with the ABS first, so let's get her back up on the lift. So the nice thing about having a Bluetooth scanner, oh, let me fix that real quick. Good old brake dust shield rubbing on the rotor. But you can go around to each of the wheels and spin it. <clears throat> so front left is reading. Okay. Go in the live data on your scanner and see if the sensors are reading. So that one reads, fronts are reading fine. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, but I don't even know if I put the rear ABS sensors in. That's the disadvantage of doing multiple builds at once. Yeah, no readings on the rear. I'm betting I just forgot to put the sensors in. Indeed I did. Let's get the rear ABS sensors installed and go from there. The nice thing is we don't even need to pull the wheels to get the sensors on. All right, my friends, rear ABS sensors are installed and imagine that all of the ABS codes are gone. So I had eight ABS codes before from two missing sensors. So apparently even the front sensors need the rear sensors to not throw a front sensor code. All that's left is the airbag, the SRS system, and I'm pretty confident that it is the clock spring. So I might pop the clock spring out of the nine real quick, provided that the same part number, put it into the eight, 
just to make sure that's the problem before I go ahead and order a new clock spring. Hold up. ABS light is back on. All right, ABS light's back on, but thankfully we are down from eight codes to one code. All it says is front right sensor fail. The only thing I could think of with the ABS system and that front right sensor, front right, front right sensor is the sensor itself is bad. Now thankfully this ain't no Subaru. Clock spring is extremely simple to remove on, on an Evo, at least an eight or nine. I didn't even check to see if the part numbers are the same. I'm just banking on that they are. Now the ticket and the key is when you take the clock spring off, don't rotate it around. Just leave it where it came off. And then I'm gonna put the front or the wheel straight on the eight, slap this on, plug it in, and technically I'm hoping it should fix the issue. It does appear that the clock springs are the same. We'll see. Alrighty, let's plug back in the battery and clear the codes and see if it comes back. The scanner is saying there's no codes, but the SRS light is on on the dash. How does that make any sense? It's like we fixed the problem, but the car doesn't want to admit that we fixed it. So I need to do some more testing tomorrow, but it's looking like it's either a bad airbag module itself, or even possibly a bad wiring harness, which doesn't sound fun neither. Always tough to fit this big girl in here, but I'm finna drive the Type R home tonight. It's too nice not to. Well boys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Very successful day with the Evo 8. Tomorrow I'm hoping we can get the airbag sorted out and just other random things finish up with the car. I want all the mechanical issues fixed before I move on to doing like cut and buff, carbon fiber parts on the exterior. I want all the mechanical issues fixed.